We are productive people and we have work to do. Our work may be software development or data science or video production. It's important and it's what gives us satisfaction. Getting something produced is what eventually makes us satisfied. And sometimes there are things that get in the way of us getting the work done, like a decision to buy a new laptop. CES 2023 just finished and already computer manufacturers are showing off their goodies. And the gap between the crazy computers and the computers for everyone else is getting wider. There's machines like the 3D screen and the double display laptop with no keyboard. And we thought the Dell XPS 13 Plus was crazy with its giant touchpad. But for the rest of us folks that just need to get our work done, there isn't a shortage of options either. There's plain Jane machines out there, just a little bit more powerful, ranging from the Intel 13th gen based laptops to the new mobile video cards from Nvidia to M2 MacBooks. We compare and we weigh all these options based on performance, the amount of speed and storage, the form factor and price, of course. Let's say you're looking for a new laptop to purchase and for weeks you've been watching YouTube videos and reading articles about the different laptops so you can finally narrow down your options and buy that perfect laptop for you to do your work. You've bookmarked the best blog posts and maybe even created an Excel sheet to keep track of the features and pros and cons of each machine. Are you one of those folks? Admit it, you are one of those folks. And it's understandable, you feel like there's a lot at stake here. If you buy the right machine, it'll be smooth sailing for you for the next couple of years. This amazing new laptop will let you do it all and be reasonably priced. If you pick the wrong laptop, then surely your work will suffer and you'll fall behind. In 2022, I've reviewed a few laptops and desktops for developers on this channel, and these were great for developers, but which of these do you choose? Or perhaps there's a new one on the horizon that was just announced and it's promising to be even better for developers. And in 2023, I'm going to be doing more tests on this channel. So which laptop should you buy? Should you wait? The Art of Thinking Clearly. Uh, it has a nice little section on decision fatigue. Nice book, by the way, you should check it out. It talks about a study conducted by a psychologist, Roy Baumeister, and a collaborator of Gene Twenge. They took a group of students and divided it into two groups. There were the deciders and the non-deciders. And Baumeister showed the deciders hundreds of items, small little items. Here's two items, here's another two items, here's another two items. He asked them to decide which is their favorite item from each of the pairs. They were also told that they could take one of the items home with them at the end of the experiment. So they thought the decision influenced what they got to keep. But the non-deciders were simply asked to think about the items and that's it. Now, after they were put through this process, both groups were then asked to put their hands in a bowl of ice cold water and hold it there for as long as possible. Can you guess what happened? Well, the deciders who had to make all those decisions, they couldn't hold their hands in icy water for nearly as long as the non-deciders. It turns out that making too many decisions can be exhausting on our brain and drain our willpower. Why am I telling you this? Well, we overanalyze our options and the options just keep growing and growing every few months. There's more and more laptops to pick from and this will cause decision fatigue if you're in the market for a new laptop. You might get paralyzed to make a decision altogether and just not make one, which will lead to lost productivity. You're constantly thinking about the new laptop and the options that it offers. That in itself is taking you away from your work and your mind from your work. The work that actually makes you happy. Now, I've actually dealt with an issue like this myself in the past and looking back at it kind of bothers me that I did that. Before I even bought my very first MacBook Pro, I was a do-it-yourselfer. Anybody familiar with one of these? This was the last machine I built. I loved building my own tower by picking all the right parts. This way I can configure exactly what I want and be proud of the thing I built. So what's wrong with that you might ask, right? Well, there isn't anything wrong with having a hobby and build computers. In fact, it's a great experience to have and I recommend it. But if you're building your only machine and that's not your job, you don't do that for a living, then whatever it is that you do, whether you're a software developer or a video editor or data scientist, you're, you're not, not doing, doing your, your work. work. <laughs> you're building a computer and doing all the research that you need to do to build a computer. Essentially, you're tinkering and wasting time. It's fine to build a machine as a hobby and spare time, but don't let that be the thing that gets in the way of you doing your work. Now, this touches upon a slightly different topic uh, about sabotaging ourselves, and we do that too, but that's for another video. I wanted to bring this story back to the point about decision fatigue, uh, where I was struggling to find the best computer parts and spent so much time doing all kinds of research that uh, I wasn't doing my work. Now, I know you clicked on this video because, well, 
you wanted to know the answer. You wanted to know what is the best developer computer of 2023. And I'm gonna give you a couple of general tips about that. But first I wanna say that uh, I'm about to give you an unpopular opinion at the risk of getting destroyed in the comments section, but hear me out here. And this is also going against what I should be doing as a YouTuber, since I should be pitching products with affiliate links. Affiliate links below to other stuff, by the way, if you wanna support the channel. But I'm doing this because I really do believe in what I'm about to tell you, and it's the best course of action. Software developers in general don't need all the power that modern computers offer in general. Now there's exceptions out there, like if you're doing very heavy duty game, I'll get into that, hold on a second. I just wanna say that the best laptop is the one that you already have. That's the one that allows you to do your work right now. It gets you productive immediately and you can do your work and you can get the satisfaction. If you don't have one, the best laptop is the one you can afford because guess what? If you're a software developer, the opportunities for you right now are pretty good. Anytime you spend not thinking about getting clients or doing your work or getting a job, that time that you spend on looking for a laptop, the perfect laptop, is time wasted. You have a certain budget, get the laptop, the best laptop that you can get for that money. I did say I was gonna maybe give you a couple of hints, a general direction hints, and you might already know this stuff, okay? You probably already do if you watch this channel, if you've been watching it for a while now. There's a couple of general rules here. If you need graphics, like heavy duty graphics, get a PC-based laptop. Intel, AMD, doesn't matter. Get a nice graphics card is in there. That's what matters most. An RTX 2070 and up is all nice. Just make sure you can afford it and get the best one that you can afford. If you don't need heavy duty graphics, MacBooks, they've given me the least amount of problems since I've been buying them since 2013 and I've been buying MacBooks and I've been buying PC laptops and the ones that give you the least problems are MacBooks. That's just how it's been. Get the biggest, baddest MacBook that you can afford. So yeah. There's gonna be a ton of YouTube videos coming out in the next few months, over the coming year, including more from me, comparing laptops for developers, their performance, their form factor, their cool new features. Just keep your goal in mind and don't focus too much on the Intel 12th generation versus Intel 13th generation or MacBook M2 versus MacBook M3. And while those incremental differences might give you a tiny little bit of an edge here and there, the most important work that happens happens in between the CPU cycles. It happens in us. Let's get our work done, folks. Shit, I'm gonna get killed for this.